Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Peace, give me peace in my heart, keep me resting. Keep me peace in my heart, I pray. Oh, give me peace in my heart, keep me resting, resting, resting. Give me resting till the break of day. So sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Give me love in my heart, keep me serving. Give me love in my heart, I pray. Oh, give me love in my heart. Serving, serving, serving. Give me serving till the break of day. Sing, Hosanna. Sing, Hosanna. Sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing, Hosanna. Sing, Hosanna. Sing, Hosanna to the King. So give me oil in my land. Keep me burning. Give me all in my land, I pray. Oh, give me all in my land. Keep me burning, burning, burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Oh, sing, Hosanna. Sing, Hosanna. Sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Hosanna to the King. Woo, yes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and here he comes. All right. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. You may be seated. Let me get this lit here for you. We're going to start it off right and get the hope candle lit from last week. Everybody hear me okay? All right. All right. Well, we do have some announcements to get us started off for this morning's service. Um, I just want to let everyone know this coming week is the last week, obviously the next seven days, that we are still collecting food for the Lake Wales Care Center. Um, so if you've got it on your hearts and you've got some you know, food lying around that you know that you may not eat that's still good, not expired, don't bring expired food in. Um, but if you've got food lying around, you know, and some food, and you want to go to the store and get some food, I know plenty of people that will use that. I got to meet with uh, Rob Quam this week, and they're just so delighted that we're, we're teaming up with them and helping them with that. Uh, secondly, our Emily tree is up. It's running. It's full go. Looks like quite a few tags have already been taken. So uh, please, please. Uh, get a tag. They're, they're not expensive gifts, but they are gifts that are needed for, for some children and some people in the area. Uh, every Wednesday, we've had Bible study going. It's been going great. Youth group, children's ministry. Uh, we meet at 7 p.m. This coming week in Bible study, will be in James 2. We'll be uh, covering verses 14 through 20. Uh, this coming Saturday, uh, December 11th, is going to be our Sons of Thunder men's meeting. Um, there will be testimony. There will be some food. The food part is where you all come in. If any of you has any specialty, like making some sort of sausage, egg, and cheese casserole, uh, make something, whip something up like that. I'm going to bring some donuts. Uh, it's going to be a good time of food. I don't cook. I do not cook. Ask my wife. I never cook. I can't do it. I can make a mean mac and cheese and hot dogs, but that's as far as it gets. Uh, but yeah, uh, bring some food. I'll bring the donuts. We'll have some testimony, some food, some fellowship, and some fun. So... Um, do not forget, Christmas Eve, we will be having a Christmas Eve service this year. It'll be at 6 p.m. Uh, Friday, December 24th. Um, but come celebrate the birth of Christ with your family. It'll be a candlelight service. I'm very, very excited about that. So uh, please be here for that. And I do have some news. Uh, for the remaining part of December, the offering plates will continue to sit in the back. But starting in January, I've made an executive decision. We are going to start passing those around again. Um, I think, yes. I think it's something that needs to be done. I think it's just an awesome experience to be able to do that. It gets everybody involved. And so starting in January, we'll be passing around the offering plates again. And then for those, speaking of that, that uh, are excitedly waiting their uh, offering envelopes for 2022, those are in the back back there. Uh, Dina put those together. If you do not see your name on one of those, get with Dina. She will act, uh, happily get that together for you so you do have one. 
Um, is everybody excited to, to celebrate this morning, to worship this morning? Amen. All right, I'm excited. So uh, before we do that, um, I do have a little event that we want to do. So if you want to come up here, Debbie, I'm going to let her explain that something we're doing this year to you, and then I'm going to pray over it. Well, I do want to correct something. Yeah, well, the mission and the care center, they do take expired food. Yes, P please don't throw it away. They'll make a decision if they feel it's really bad, but a lot of times it's just Best Buy, okay. and they don't want any food to go to waste. That's right. That's right. I brought some. My sister-in-law was going to throw some away up in Ohio, and I, I said, you're throwing this away? Well, it's expired. No, put it in my car. It, came, it rode all the way back to Florida, and it's at the mission. <laughs> Um, okay, for New Horizons, um, first of all, I want to thank Ella. She made some cookies for us to take today, Yay, and uh, Karen Rowdy's going to make some for us to take on the 19th, so thank you for stepping up and helping us. They do love their sweets. Um, for Christmas, the church was able to um, get them, yeah, you can hold that, uh, was able to get some throws for New Horizons. We were able to, uh, in the corner, have them embroidered with Spirit Lake Community Church, so they'll know, no matter who gets this blanket or who has this blanket, however long it lasts, um, they'll always know that it came from Spirit Lake. When we have, you know, we have them in some different colors, you know, so um, we're going to be taking them uh, probably on the 19th. We'll take them when we go. But um, I'd like for the pastor and all of us to pray over these um, blankets. Yes, yeah, so it, as I do pray this morning, if you would bow your heads, you can feel free to put your hands forward. We're going to pray over these, that these are, you know, awesome gift that go to these people. We want them to know how much we care, how much they're loved. If, you, if you've been to nursing homes, I know we have the nursing home ministry where we sing. A, a lot of people at times feel sheltered. They feel alone. They feel like that no one cares about them. And so by doing this small gesture, we as a church want people to know that we do genuinely love them. We do genuinely care for them. So let's pray about these because, again, we don't know where they'll wind up, who will end up with them. So let's pray for them. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you this morning. First and foremost, thank you for those called uh, to, to do this mission, to be able to provide these throws. And, Lord, I, I'm blessed to be a pastor of a church that cares so much for outreach and wants to do these types of things, Lord. So I pray that wherever these throws, these blankets end up, Lord, that your hand is on them that your hand is on those families, that your hand is on the people that are in the nursing homes that, that use these that, to warm themselves, Lord. And I know the, uh, the nursing home ministry where we go and we sing, Lord, it's just such a blessing to, to those folks. And Lord, I pray that we can continue to do things like this and that your hand is on all of us as we continue to, to provide uh, just some kind of relief and comfort and, and uh, a showing of care for those people, Lord. We love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. And so if you do get a chance, remember Gladys Toker in prayer today as she did fall. All right. Are we going to do Christmas around the world today, Kathy? Are we doing Christmas around the world today? Okay, then we'll do Christmas in Winter Haven. How about that? She caught me off guard last week. I jumped the gun. Now this week, we're not doing it. Okay. All right. Well, I hope you all are as blessed as we have been in this holiday season. Isn't it great? It's a joyful time of year. Not much joy out there unless we take it, though, right? So we got to take it. So let's all stand. We're going we're gonna to sing a song. We're going to light a candle. We're going to start something going here that will carry past these walls.
Come forward to light the Advent candle. I told CJ, today's his birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, CJ. This is the only candle he's going to get. <laughs> Probably not. We light our second Advent candle. This candle is lit for love. God's love is lifting, coming to us that we might demonstrate his love to the world. God's love is measureless, never-ending, unquenchable. God's unmerited love calls us to service. It calls us to share his love with everyone in our world. Everyone the homeless woman begging for help on the corner, everyone, the CEO, the executive whose identity is lost in the emptiness of a career, everyone, the motherless child seeking acceptance in all the wrong places, <coughs> everyone, the grandfather forgotten in a nursing home, everyone, the coworker you are seeing every day, Everyone, the flight attendant you will only see once. Everyone, the minister discouraged in ministry. Everyone, the soldier far away from home. They will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. They will know we are Christians by our love. May the Lord flood you with an unending, undying love for one another and for all humanity so that your hearts will be reinforced with his strength held blameless and holy before God, our Father, when our Lord Jesus, the anointed, the liberating King, appears along with all his holy ones. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 3, 12 to 13. And here's the prayer. We thank you, God, for loving us and sending us your Son that we might be saved. Father, we are forever grateful. Let's all stand as we sing the first Noel. The first Noel, the angels did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay.
Everybody's favorite subject, right? Okay. You all are a lot different than some churches I've been in if you like to talk about that. Um, but I do have a little story to tell you today <clears throat> that I came across actually yesterday while reading a little devotional. Um, this has been a really good week for Jesus, myself, and my wife because we've been talking a lot and we've made some good decisions, I think, we feel very good about and others we've withheld from that we thought we shouldn't make. And, as I was reading yesterday, we were all done with devotions for us, and I was just, I got a little devotional that one of my relatives blesses me with, and I was reading it, and it was all about stuff, you know, all the stuff that we have, right? We got a lot of stuff. You got to admit, we, I don't care who you are, we got way more than food and clothes, because that's what Jesus said, don't worry about that. And we got cars and houses, and Lord, I don't know what we got, tricycles, bicycles, motorcycles, we got everything. So yeah, we got it all. So... The part that caught my eye was the verse he used. Have you ever heard it's more blessed to give than to receive? You've heard that, right? Do you, is, how many people think that's a Bible verse or is that just a Bible principle? Which do you think? Think about that. It's actually a Bible verse. It's in Acts chapter 20, verse 35, I believe. But check me out. It's the end of Paul's doing a dissertation. And he says in there, as the Lord said, as the Lord, that would be Jesus, as he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And that just got a whole bunch of stuff going in my head, right? Because it's Christmas and some of us are thinking, oh, we got to go buy presents and this and that. And, you know, and, and it's not the best spirit we go in, right? I mean, it's a little exciting if you got kids. You get to be Judy and my age, it's like... Oh boy, you know, what are we going to do? Everybody's got everything already, right? It's hard to find something that people would want. But that wasn't the point. That it, it came about, it's more blessed to give and receive. Who's the biggest giver in the universe? God is the biggest giver. And what did he give us? We read this verse all the time in John 3.16. He sent his son. Now, wrap your heads around this principle. If God's principle, because Jesus said so, is it's more blessed to give than receive... He was blessed by giving his son. Try to get your head around that for a minute. That's, that's tough. It was tough for me. And so then I went on a Bible search. You know, this is, I got to, you know, I've got to find the Greek meaning of the word blessed in this verse. And there's all the stuff you would expect. There's like, well, to be showered out, be under God's tender care and all those things that we feel blessed by. But God, can he bless himself? Is that what he was saying? But one of the other words they use for blessed is joy. Joy, 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 joy. And we've been singing about joy. We've been singing about peace. But the joy that he has somehow, I don't understand it, but when people come into the kingdom because of the gift he gave, he has great joy. That's the only thing that fit. And I said, wow, well, wrap your head around that one. What did we do to earn that? And it was anybody. Nothing. <laughs> we did nothing. 
And he knew just what we wanted. He didn't have to call us up and ask our Christmas list. He knew what we needed. He knew what we wanted and what we'd be happy with in the end because he sees a picture so much bigger than what we have. Okay, so why did I go way over here? Okay, so I went over here to get you all to think about that. As we think about giving to others, what should be, what should be our reward in that? It's, and think about this. Jesus endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. And that's how I know that's the joy that it's talking about when God was blessed by giving his son. So if we're giving and not blessed by it, our blesser is broke, right? I hear, you know, God does not need our sacrifice. He told us that. He didn't want that. He'd rather have mercy, right? So as you're giving this year, whatever it is, and we're getting ready to give tithes and offerings, and I know this was a long trail, but it, God gave it to me, and I wanted to share it with you all. We need to think in those terms. God, look what God gave me. Wow. I didn't earn it. There's no way you earned it. I can tell you, if you want to come here after church, try to convince me you earned it, I can find a thousand reasons why you did not earn it. I can show you a thousand, well, maybe not a thousand verses, but a whole bunch of them said you did not. So all we're doing is giving God back what's already his anyway because he owns everything, right? But boy, letting go of it sometimes, it's a little bit thought goes to that, isn't there? There's a lot of thought goes into it. But if it's not in our heart to give it, he'd rather we didn't give it. But open up your heart. I've seen this congregation in action. I've seen how you give. There's never been a time that someone in the community has had a need or somebody in the church, people we don't know, and somebody said, we need to raise food, clothes, something, that you all just poured your hearts out and gave. And it's been awesome. I love being part of a body that does that. Amen. So as we get, put our tithe in the day and think about Christmas, think about the joy, the blessing of giving that you have something to give. The widow's might was just one little thing. I have one in my safe back in Maryland. We have one, Judy and I do. And it's nothing. It's smaller than a penny. It, it's like smaller than a dime. It's nothing. But that was everything that lady had, and she put it in there. And Jesus said, that is more blessing than all the rich people throwing everything in there they want. So don't think your gift is too small. It's never too small if you give it with the right heart. So let's pray for the offering in that spirit today. Amen? All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you that you gave us the ability to give, that you showed us a principle in your word, how we can be so blessed and joyful giving. And Lord, work in our hearts now to help us to let go of what we should let go of and to hold on to what you want us to hold on to. Just give us that wisdom and that hope and take this offering that's brought today and multiply it that many souls would be saved because we know that is the Father's joy to see that one of that, that hundred, that 99, it's not the next, it's that one that comes today. Let them come boldly to the throne of grace for salvation today. Let these gifts go toward that purpose. In Jesus' name we ask it. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And they said, we're going to sing a song. You can sit, you can stand. I told Brother Tony, I'm waiting for somebody to run, run the aisles. No, that was you, Brother Anthony. I said, I've never seen that in Church of God yet, at least not in this this one here but if you feel so impressed by the Holy Spirit go ahead if you don't you'll fall over a chair and hurt yourself that's all I can tell you okay make me a clean heart oh God renew a right spirit within me create in me a clean heart oh God do a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O oh Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Oh, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Renew a right spirit within me. In me a clean heart, oh God, do a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, oh God, do a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Oh Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Renew a right spirit 
within me, creating me a clean heart. Oh God, renew a right spirit within me, creating me a clean heart. Oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, through a right spirit within me. to this time of prayer as a congregation I was thinking as he's singing that song is that really we could just all respectfully bow and say amen if that was our prayer if that was our true prayer isn't it because it all starts with him but he uses you he uses me and so as we think about that and we we come to this time of prayer we've heard needs that have been made uh, perhaps already this uh, in our sanctuary and and even in Sunday school and I hear conversations going there are definitely physical needs that we have and uh, others and relatives and things that are they're in need people be traveling this holiday season and Christmas flying and all those things and we'll be seeing people and friends coming back down and and going and so we, we pray that God would give us safe uh, travel but also as a congregation we pray that we would continue to live out the words of that song isn't it great to think that if we uh, allow the Lord to start a work in us and then he can carry that out to other people and that's really what being a church is all about so this morning as we pray let's agree scripture says that we come together and two more agree on something then it shall be done in his name and so let's pray that as a congregation as a group of believers that we could renew in that right spirit in our heart that Christmas spirit that's really for us all year round not just during this time but it seems at this time of year uh, the world is a little more open to that spirit of Christ because that is the Christmas spirit and that we would uh, go and take that to the world let's pray father thank you so much for an opportunity to come and to to really as a body it's so wonderful to um, have that prayer on our own and to go into our prayer closet we know how important that is and and Lord you're not impressed with big words and big things that we have that are outwardly but but on the inside God and this song just really encapsulates what what you have for us to do and that is to renew a right spirit within each of us that we could take that out into the world and to share that that with the love that you've given us pray that you be with pastor anthony as he brings us the message that you've given him help us to have an open heart an open spirit open mind that we would hear from you this morning through him and that if we would be obedient to you that we could leave this place and say truly it was good to be in the house of the Lord today. May it be so, for it's in Christ's name we ask. Amen. <clears throat> all right. Well, good morning, church. How are we? All right. All right. Well, happy month of December, right? Man, we made it. Um, it is it's such a good morning, such an awesome time of worship this morning. Uh, but we are officially in the second Sunday of Advent. Uh, last week, we, we talked about what Advent meant, where the, the original word derives from and, and how to truly make it a focus of yours during Christmas time. We lit the first candle, the hope candle. 
we talked about what real hope is. About the fact that the word hope, it gets thrown around, thrown around way too often. And the fact that our sight should be set much higher on the things that we truly hope for in this life. You see, God has so much in store for every single one of us. And focusing on bettering our relationship this holiday season is definitely something to hope for. Amen? Amen. This morning, as we lit the second Advent candle on the wreath, and now we're going to be talking about God's love. God's love. As Christians, we need to understand there is no real Christmas without God's love. Now, let's be honest. Even those that, that don't know Christ seem happier for the most part this time of year. So I want to say something here. This might be that time of year as Christians where we're looking for that, that opening, right? We're looking for that opportunity to talk to friends and family about Jesus. Maybe get them to come to church and hear a message. Now's your time. They're going to expect it. You know, they got the billboards up. Jesus is the reason for the season. They have things everywhere. Winter Haven's good at that. I like the billboards around town. Um, but you have that opportunity to be able to talk to people about it. So they might be expecting it, even if they don't want to hear about it. And you never know what kind of day or, or week they may be having. It could be the opportunity to get to them. For Jesus to finally open their hearts and, and turn their hearts away from stone and be able to get them into church. So think about that this time of year. When you look at the lights, you look at the trees, many people, they can't help but smile. Last night, the family and I, we just drove around Winter Haven looking at lights. My kids were more enamored with a toilet on the side of the road, but I don't know why. But <laughs> you go around and you look at lights and it just brings joy to people. But for us as Christians, it should go so far beyond that. Our wonderful Savior came some 2,000 years ago, came to earth to save our souls. And like Ed was talking, that should get you excited to redeem us. There's joy in that. To pardon our sins, to bring us into a direct relationship with Him. And because of that, the word love for us should take on a whole new meaning. For us, to claim to know and have relationship with the Savior of the world is something other people don't get to talk about. So many of us over the last few weeks have been doing what? Getting ready for Christmas, right? Some of us hit up Black Friday to save a few extra bucks. If you didn't do Black Friday, you wanted to sit at home, you did Cyber Monday. And now we're, we're turning our attention to get the holiday meals ready. Most of us, we've already got our trees up. We've already got lights on the house. But Christmas, it's so much more than just buying gifts. It's more than, than cooking for several hours only to sit down for 15 minutes. Ladies, am I right? It's so much more than that. As the church, it is our job to make sure Christmas does not fly by in this craziness and we miss Jesus all together. So this morning, as we ship from hope to love, we need to realize that God's love is shown so many times in our life without us even realizing it. It's shown in the smile of somebody passing by. It's shown in the conversation when you're standing in line at the checkout counter. It's shown in the kindness of a stranger holding the door for you when they didn't have to do that. That seems like a rare feat nowadays. And last but not least, it's shown in that rare occasion when you're both fighting for that same parking spot and somebody waves you into that spot. It rarely happens, but I have seen it happen. See, I'll never forget last year when I worked at Olive Garden. And this young married couple, they were leaving the restaurant. I said to them, you two have a very merry Christmas. And they stopped and they said, thank you. You know, you don't hear Merry Christmas too often anymore. All you ever seem to hear is Happy Holidays. And because of that, they said, we're taking out Christ from Christmas. You hear that a lot. But I have something for you. In a sense, they are right. Corporate America at times, it, it really does try to limit Jesus as much as possible this time of year. But what that young couple didn't realize and what some of you might not realize, holidays actually comes from the word holy days. Holidays actually comes from the word holy days. 
So when you say Merry Christmas, if they say Happy Holidays, let them do that because it actually is one of the most holy days of the year. Amen? When we watch the news and we pay attention to social media, all these negative things are fed to us all across the world. It's easy to forget what Christmas is truly about. You know, you want to turn on the news or turn on television and watch caroling happen. Or you want to watch, you know, a nursing home choir or something like that. That's what you want to see. But no, you see the fighting over a toy. You see the fighting over parking spots. And that, that's what people want you to see. It's less about love and more about self. And the whole world teaches us to live like that. But the Bible, it's very clear. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40 says this. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. See, church, there is no more beautiful words than these spoken throughout the entire Bible. Unfortunately, today, so often, love, it's used out of context. It's just thrown around to appease whomever they're talking to. You see, I worked in a restaurant. Do you know how many times people were dating this person this week, this person next week, this person? And the word love was used every single time. Or how often do we say things like, boy, I sure love this chocolate bar, or man, I love pizza. Folks, we're saying I love you in that sense to a piece of food. We're taking that word out of context. I mean, really? That's where we've come to as a society. And we really need to ask ourselves, especially around Christmas time, do we actually love those things? Or is it just a casual verb that we're, we're throwing around describing something we enjoy? It's okay to say I like those things. We like a lot of things. But do we genuinely love those things? I really want you to ponder this for a moment. My goal when I stand up here and preach on Sunday mornings is to ask questions, to get you thinking for the week. I had a friend of mine this morning say, man, I've been thinking about hope all week. That's what I'm challenging you to do. That's what I want you to do. So I want you to think about love, but I really want you to ponder this for a moment. When was the last time you heard the words, I love you. Did the person mean it when they said it? Did you return it with an I love you back? Are you able to count on one hand maybe the amount of people that you truly do love? Or maybe you're like so many people around the world who don't even know if there's anyone out there that truly does love them for who they are. The term love, again, it's used too loosely in our society. It's sad but true. We as human, human beings, we don't, we don't use the word love the way that God intended it to be used. We as Christians, we must do a better job of showing the word love, showing the world what godly love is all about. Church, we do have a God, and guess what? He loves us the same yesterday, today, and forever. You see, God's love for us, it never changes. You, we may act up as, as human beings, and we may even rebel at times, but His love for us, again, it never changes. And this God I'm talking about this morning loves us so much that He sent His one and only Son to die on a cross so that every one of us who believe can in turn spend eternity with Him. I told you many times I don't believe in accidents, coincidences, and Ed, you and I did not talk at all this morning. The next verse that I'm going to be talking about today, in John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, it says this, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Sometimes I think we as believers, we, we forget these verses all too often. We know what they are, but we tuck them away for a rainy day or something like that. 
Have you forgotten those verses at some point this year? I know I have. I'll be honest, as your pastor, I've forgotten them. Because I can promise you that God has not forgotten you. And I can rest easy in times of struggle because I know in my heart how much God really loves me. Maybe you haven't been to church in a while. Maybe you haven't seen friendly faces in a while. But I can promise you that love is unchanging. The love from God and the love from people within the church, that body that cares for you. So what was God's reason for sending his one and only son to earth for us? Why would he do that? Because of the fact that he is God. He knew exactly what was going to happen, right? Look at it again. It says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. You see, God came to us in the form of man out of love. It was out of love because he cared about each and every one of us that much. That he was willing to be the perfect sacrifice. He was willing to be that sacrificial lamb that was slain knowing full well that every single one of us in this room watching online, we could never bear that burden. We think we can at times, especially us as men, right? We, we throw those problems, those issues on our back, and we sit there, and we keep walking, and we keep walking. We can't bear those burdens, not without God, no matter how strong we are. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Church, this is by far, by far the most life-changing and loving gift that God could have ever given any of us. There's no gift in this world that we could possibly give someone else that would be better than this one. That's why I, as your pastor, have challenged you so much this year to be the testimony. I know I'm only six weeks in, and I know I've harped on it a lot, but we've challenged ourselves, and I'm challenging you to be the hands and feet of Christ. People may never open the word of God, They may never open a Bible. They may never look into this. We know how beautiful it is. They may never do it, but they can see how you interact with them. And if you are in tune with God, if you are in relationship with God, they will see God through you. There's no larger sacrifice or higher form of love that God could have ever shown us. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 15 and 16 says this. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom, I, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Like I've talked about so many times so far since I've been here, salvation in this world cannot be found anywhere else. If you do not believe in Christ, if you do not share the love of Christ, you're not going to be able to just do that by by showing good deeds and doing that. We'll get to that in a moment, though. I'll say it again. Our only way to heaven is through the cross, through the work of Jesus Christ. There is no other way. In Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 12, it says this, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. You see, when we read this passage in Luke, which so often we overlook and take for granted, we should be floored so overcome with emotion because he was literally born to us. Born to cause great joy for all people. We'll talk more about that next week. To literally save our souls from hell. Jesus is everything to those who believe. He is King of kings, Lord of lords, the King of all creation. He is the Most High. Brothers and sisters, if this is not describing what true love is, I can't give you as a pastor a better scenario of what is. 
God's love for each and every one of us, it's unconditional. He loves you all so much, but the best part is he refuses to leave us the way he found us. He said it plain as day that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. But like we've been talking about in James, in our Bible study recently, we must be what? I told you I was going to tie it back in. We must be doers of the word, not hearers. That verse says whoever believes. It doesn't say whoever believed in the past tense, but whoever believes as in the present test. Jesus must presently be Lord of your life. You have to let him be the great shepherd, the shepherd that he came to be. And I can promise you this, if you let him, it will cause a ripple effect, a tidal wave that will sweep through your life like a hurricane. And I pray as your pastor, every one of you in here can truly see it this year more than anything else to understand how much Jesus loves you. You see, you wouldn't probably be sitting here today if someone didn't bring you or if you didn't believe this, but I think at times in our faith, we get stagnant. We all do it. We get stagnant. We get lax in our reading. We get lax in our praying. We get lax in our testimony. And as a pastor over the last almost six years, been times when I feel in a congregation, when they leave, I feel like they took nothing with them. It's defeating as a pastor. Ask some other pastors in here. The sermon goes in one ear and out the other. And today I pray as we talk about God's love that this isn't one of those times. The last thing I want for you is to leave unchanged to leave feeling unloved because I can promise you every single person in here you are loved but it's up to us as Christians to make these words come to life for us to show this love to the rest of the world will you vow to serve him alone stop letting the outside things penetrate your mind and take control to love those that are unloved, and to be the beacon of light that this dark world desperately needs. That's what God is asking. Love God, love people. That's it. If you follow those two commandments, if you follow those two items, it's hard-pressed to do anything else. I've said this before, but I want to say it again. I think I talked about it a little last week, but how many of you have someone in your life that They don't come to church because they have to get their stuff in order. We all do. They have too many sins. They have too much going on. People literally feel like they're going to burst in flames. I said that Wednesday. I have friends that have told me that. They feel like they will burst in flames if they walk into church. We need to help them understand they don't need to change anything first. That God indeed loves them just as they are. He just wants us. He wants all of us. We come to him a broken shell of of who we've become and let him put the pieces back together. That's what real love can do. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The Christmas season, for most people, it's a time where we rush around and focus on everything else instead of Christ. And unfortunately, even those that are believers find ourselves forgetting the promises God gave to us in His Word. So your focus this week, if you choose to let it be as we lift the candle of love, should be your commitment to doing just that. If you feel like doing something else, or you feel like going down a path, or someone cuts you, love God, love people. Love God, love people. Loving God and loving people, there are no greater commandments found anywhere in Scripture. So as I close this morning, and the band comes forward, I want to say this. Whether or not you love the Christmas season, and there's a lot of us that do, or this season gives you a ton of anxiety, 
throughout the entire month, which there's a lot of us like that. Understand that this season and what it's truly about is about the love of Christ and nothing else. And the fact that God loves you again so much that he sent his one and only son to die for you. And in dying and being resurrected to have a relationship with you. Christmas is a time to remember God's love for you. And that his love came as a small baby in a manger that went on to do amazing things for each and every one of us. To give us hope when we didn't think we had any. To give us love when we feel unloved. To give us joy when the world makes us angry and sad. And to give us peace when this world is flipped upside down. The Advent, Advent season is a time to remember just who Jesus is. And I pray above all else you remember that this holiday season. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you this morning. Lord, I pray that this message, this message that you use me as a vessel for, reaches each and every person. Lord, that they take something from it. They take it to their place of work, to their friends, to their family, to their homes. Lord, let us be the hands and feet of Christ this holiday season. Let us be a beacon of love, a beacon of light when no one else is. Lord, we see when people get angry and upset and it stirs emotions, Lord. Let us react like you would this season. God, help us to be more like you and to love like you did. We love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. As we were saying in the South, there's a lot of meat and taters in that message right there. Um, you know, I was thinking as he was preaching, you know how the world has taken words and just absolutely destroyed them? You, you know, you, you used to be able to say this was us, but you say it now, it's like, whoa. Isn't it great God never changes the meaning of anything? <laughs> I can keep up with him, but the world, not only can I keep up with it, I don't want to. If, if they were to have a word today, like God had three words, I believe, in the New Testament for love. Am I right? Three, four, three. I, they don't have a word for what people call love in the world today. It would be like, it would have to be like confused emotion or something like that. And that's just not a good thing, is it? But anyway, we're a week behind maybe with this song, but not really because it's called Jesus, Hope of the Nations. And we've been talking about hope. And the reason he is a hope is because he loved us so much. So it all fits, right? It all fits. Um, so we're going to sing this song. This was a song the first time I ever did it here was in a thick, I well, didn't do it here. I did it on my patio. We were beaming church from over at our house. And uh, because it was like that time when it's like, well, the whole world had stopped. But this song right here, Jesus is still the hope of the nations. We got a chance to make a big impact. Let's make one. Jesus. Hope of the nation, Jesus, comfort for all who mourn. You are the source of heaven's hope on earth. Jesus, light in the darkness. Jesus, truth in each circumstance. You are the source of heaven's hope, if it in us, you are the rock whom we trust, you are the light shining for all the world to see, you rose from the dead, conquering fear, our prince of peace, drawing us near, Jesus our hope, living for all You are the source of heaven's hope on earth. Hey. Jesus, light in the dark. Jesus, truth in its circumstance. You are the source 
about hope, we've talked about love. You know what those two things mean. We have a hope, a great hope, that our Savior is coming back. But while we are still here, we are to do what? To love God, love people. So this week, go above and beyond. Be a love to somebody that you normally wouldn't. Show them who Jesus is and what he means to you by the way that you treat them. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this service, Lord. Thank you for being present today, God. I pray this morning as we leave and we go to our homes and we go out to lunch, Lord, again, let us be a beacon of hope to those who need it, Lord, and let us be a love to those who need it the most, God. Lord, I pray that you fill our lives this week with the Spirit, that we feel your presence, and that above all else, we love God and love people. Lord, we love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed. We will add love God, love people. Go and make disciples. Amen. <laughs>